Today I'm going to show you how I took this dramatically underexposed long exposure shot and turned it into this using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Hi guys and thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the channel. Well, news from my part of the world here in Australia. If it's not fire, if it's not COVID lockdowns, then normally we're underwater. <laughs> and unfortunately, most eastern parts of Australia this week have absolutely copped it with rainstorms and there is some severe flooding happening and people have been evacuated from their homes. And the authorities have said, you know, really don't go out unless it's absolutely necessary. So I'm doing my part. I've come back in here to the studio and I thought this is a really good opportunity because I've had a couple of you guys out there ask me for this. I'm going to do a tutorial on some long exposure landscape photography, doing some post processing in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. This long exposure sunset shot I'll be using today was taken at Glencoe in Scotland. At the time I was using my Nikon D810 and I had to put on some waders to make my way out into the middle of this stream or river to find a composition looking back towards these mountains. The settings and filters I used are on the screen now and as you can tell from the opening of this video, the end shot was massively undercooked and the reason for that was because I forgot to take into account at the time that I had another two filters in front of my 10 stop ND filter and I didn't really compensate for that when I was calculating the exposure time. Okay, so we all make mistakes, but luckily I can recover this shot with the techniques I'm about to show you. Oh, and if you really want to see the actual video of this shot being taken, I'll leave it up above here for you guys to click on and just check out a little bit later on. Okay, so no messing around, let's hop into it and let's begin with opening the raw image in Lightroom. So here we go, I've got my image in Lightroom here. I'm going to scroll down firstly on the right hand side here. And I'm just gonna correct the lens correction. So we've got remove chromatic aberration, yes, and enable profile correction. So it's just gonna get rid of any sort of distortion in the lens. Next, we're gonna go up to the top here. And first of all, I'm going to adjust the whites. I'm going to lift those up just to give me a bit more definition in that sky area. I'm just gonna lift it up to around about say 60, 62 will do. Uh, with the blacks also, just gonna lift those up just a tad, just up to about say, 30 I think now with the exposure I'm going to lift this up dramatically and now this is where you really get to see the dynamic range of the Nikon cameras and what they can do this is just amazing so we're going to lift that up and already you can see that I'm pulling that detail back in the foreground there I'm going to lift it all the way up to say about two I think something about two. yeah around about two now, also with the shadows, watch this. Lift up those shadows and automatically you can start to see the definition in the foreground in those rocks. Now, also with the highlights, I'm gonna drop those right down because you can see that by doing this, I'm getting some real definition into those clouds. And these clouds were just so crazy. You'll see when I do it up a little bit more how it looks like there's flames in the sky. I'm just gonna push in now you'll see there's quite a little bit of noise around this area. To get rid of that, we just come down on the right hand side here where it says noise reduction. With that luminance, I'm just gonna kick that up to say something about 25 and you'll see that those little dots are starting to disappear a little bit. So you're just reducing that noise. Let's just go up to the top here and I'm just gonna scroll back down to where it says clarity. So I'm just gonna push into the mountain and also you can see there's a little bit of a hot pixel. I'm actually gonna get rid of that in Photoshop in a minute. I'm just gonna increase the clarity just a little bit. Not too much, say about 12. The same with the dehaze, because I'm just gonna cut into that mountain glare and you can see how it's cut through the glare on that mountain. Let's come back out in the full screen. Now that's looking much better already. I'm going to lift up my saturation. I just want to enhance those colors just a little bit. Same with the vibrance. I'm just going to lift that up a little tiny bit as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool around about there. Just a little bit more on the saturation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flick that over into Photoshop. 
So let's just come up to photo and edit and edit in Adobe Photoshop and we just wait for my old clunky computer to get it over to Photoshop. All right, so we're in Photoshop now. Very simple things what I'm doing in Photoshop. I like doing these type of adjustments in Photoshop more than I like in Lightroom. First of all, I'm gonna just come down to my dodge tool here on the left hand side. So let's just click on that. Uh, that's just a little bit high in the exposure. I'm just gonna drop that down to 35%. Also over here, I'm just gonna use a very soft round brush and set it, I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller, just hitting on the brackets, just to make it a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna lift up the light at the bottom of that mountain. Just where you can see that little bit of light breaking through, that valley there coming through, I'm just gonna accentuate that a little bit. So you'll see, you'll see what I do here. I'm just gonna accentuate just that little bit of light. Now also in the foreground, I'm actually gonna make that brush a little bit bigger. And I'm also gonna kick up the exposure to 50%. I'm gonna paint just around this rock area here. Now I had a polarizer filter on which was really helping cut through the glare of the water. So I was able to see the rocks, which has really made this shot look much more dramatic. See how the way I've composed the shot, I'm using those rocks as a lead in line coming along the river and it's leading up to the mountain in the background to the long exposure of the clouds. Just a little bit more around here, a little bit there, a little bit just more down here. It's a little bit too dark. I just want to accentuate those lines in the corner there. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. A little bit more light around that mountain. Down the bottom, I can just see with my eye, there are a few little hot pixels. Now to get rid of those, I'm just going to come up here to my spot healing brush. So I'm just going to grab a hold of that. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. And you can see up here, it's just a few little hot pixels. I know there was one on the mountain before when I zoomed in, so I'm going to get rid of that as well. So I just scroll along the bottom here and that's looking pretty good. Just a couple here. I'm just gonna go up to the top of the frame now and just go along the top just to look for any sort of dust particles. And I think this is actually pretty good. So I was a pretty good boy. I had a clean sensor on this day. So let's just go back down to that mountaintop where that hot pixel was right on that mountain. I'm just gonna get rid of that just simply like this and it's gone. Let's come back out to full screen. All right, so that is looking quite dramatic. And by using the dodge tool and burning those light patches into the image, it's kind of like almost given us a natural vignette around the outside. But you can see the way the light leads your eye along the rocks, over to the patch on the left there, up to the mountain, and then onto the clouds. So there we go. Let's just put a nice little border around the outside of that up here using the stroke. Yeah, 75 will be alright. Let's just go into full screen. And there is our shot from Glencoe. Well guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I mean, how amazing is that dynamic range out of those Nikon full frame cameras? I mean, the fact that you can get that image back to that standard, it really does blow my mind. Hopefully, next week, I'm going to be back out in nature. I'll be doing some landscape photography or bird photography or whatever. As I always say, never stop creating and I'll see you next time.